appreciate you doing this work. This has been something we've looked at for years and years. Trying. We're the only county in this area that doesn't have trout stocking by the DNR. And having talked with the head of the DNR before, I know he wants to do that. So it's just a matter of us being able to find a place, but I appreciate the work you've done. There's three counties in the state that does not stock, and we're one of them. Let's get ready to check. Go so for <laughs> All right. All right, next is discussion of concern, possible action, and I'll put on the agenda compensatory time for you, Doc. I asked the President Matthews to put this on there. As I commented before, I'm not going to go into a lot of the detail. We've hashed some, through some of these things before, but uh, I will make a motion at this time that uh, we go ahead and pay the compensatory time down to the 240 uh, maximum that's uh, in the code and uh, pay these people that have that. Uh, and I think you've designated starting in 2013, what they were in 2013. At the end of 2013. And uh, that we also, if there's any questions that would come up about this, how to do it and things, that uh, we just go ahead and consult the prosecutor on it as far as if there's a procedure other than what we have tonight, uh, he'll inform us of that. But I'll make that motion at this time. And then we will be requiring the employee to take off after we pay down to the 240 and then they would be required to take that, off. That's, the that's my understanding that that time would be, would have to be taken off. Of that, was, that was, there was one or two options and that was the second option. Could I ask you a question? How, how long do they have to take off? Well, they, it's supposed within, to be within the, within the year. Within the year. Is it going to be within this? Day? It will be within, within this year. Yeah. Okay. okay. So that's my motion. Within the, the year starting now or the current? Well, as soon as, if this passes, it would be starting now. Is there a second? Well, I think I'd like to ask a question with Mr. Banks first about, would this motion include uh, taking the 240 for regular employees and what about any pay? I didn't understand that completely. Maybe I didn't hear. No, it's my understanding what we would do, would we would pay any excess now over 240, 480 for emergency personnel and that the time that was accumulated that's compensatory time up to the 240 would be taken as time off uh, up to that time. And that also prevent, I think, a problem with whether we pay time and a half versus time uh, in compensation versus overtime. And is Mr. Gatecard available, or have we got this clarified? This is his recommendation, as we've got written paper on. I, I can read you what um, the prosecutor actually sent, if you like. He says, I've been contacted by multiple parties about my previous memorandum regarding the law relating to compensatory time, and my recommendation is to bring the county into compliance with the applicable law. And it seems that a supplemental memo clarifying one point in particular might be appropriate. At the conclusion of my previous memo under a comp time summary, under number paragraph one, I recommended that the county take prompt action to pay any employee who has been permitted to accumulate more than the allowable amount of comp time for any hours in excess of the allowable limit. While I did not recommend paying anything more than the amount necessary to reduce any employee's accumulated comp time below the allowable limit, the commission could certainly decide to clear all accumulated compensatory balance by paying and zeroing all, um, excuse me, below the allowable limit. The commission could certainly decide to clear all accumulated comp time balances by paying and zeroing all accumulated balances. This is the commission's call and would be one way of removing any future liability and eliminating the needs for those employees to be away from their duties to reduce their accrued comp time. The purpose of my memo was to explain my understanding of the applicable law and the need to take prompt action to bring the county into compliance. Paying those employees who have been permitted to exceed the limit on comp time accrual is required as I interpret the law. Whereas paying off all unused compensatory time and starting with a clean state would be permissible. Business management decisions within the commission's authority to make. And I, he says, I hope this clarifies my, primer, my prior memorandum. He's basically saying that whatever course of action that we take, whether we pay the amount down to the 240 and make them pay it off and make them take off time, or paying the um, entire balance in full, 
it doesn't matter. He's saying that we cannot zero out that time, in his opinion. So regardless of what we do, we have one or two options that we can take, in his opinion. Okay, I think I understand that part of it well. Thank you. Um, the other issue I may have is uh, uh, if we give them the comp time, there is a conflict possibly that it could interfere with their vacation time. And do we understand that, that comp time comes first? Yeah, I think that was uh, Gabe Hart's. I heard that mentioned. Uh, I, I don't know if Mary told me that or that not. Was his that, previous that, that was his first memo. That was his first memo. That he felt that. Uh, compensatory time should come off before the vacation time. And I'll second the Commissioner Banks' motion. All right, there is a motion and there is a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? No. It's a two to one vote. The ayes have it. Motion carries. Next on the agenda is Josh Brumfield regarding the Yaki address. Gentlemen, well, my business is not assessor business. It's, I'm representing the people, the good people of Yaki, right? For an, ad, for an address, a physical address um, issue that has I guess came about once the Yaki Post Office closed a couple of years ago, and in your packet here, I've included a map of the affected area. And so, what what basically has happened is is that a couple of years ago, the Yaki Post Office closed. Um, the Griffithsville Post Office took on the responsibility of delivering the mail to citizens in Yaki. And with the map that you see in front of you, there are. 12 residents on the what would be the west end of Yaki as you come into Yaki from the Griffithsville side that have been forced to change their physical address from from Yaki to Griffithsville and the folks in that area and this is I just recently moved into the area and I didn't know about this until I moved into the area but what had happened was when I moved into the area and, and I went to the post office and asked them once I got my address from uh, Lincoln 911 and notified them that I'd be receiving mail. They notified me that I was living in Griffithsville, and which I responded that that was Yaki. It's within the political boundary of Yaki, and I didn't know that the folks around me had a Griffithsville address, and that happened over the past two or three years. So when I go back, I, I talk to these folks and I ask them, I say, you know, what's what's the deal? Do you have a Griffithsville address? And they're like, yes, but we want a Yaki address. We feel like, you know, we've lived in Yaki our entire lives and we've been forced to change this to Griffithsville and we don't know why. And some folks even said they thought it was a 911 issue. Uh, and I talked to Alan Holder about the, the issue and um, when they carry a a Griffithsville address in the, within the political boundaries of Yaki. It creates confusion there and with mail and UPS and, and everything else. So what I did was I was asked by those 12 residents that I have outlined on the map and I have the names and they all signed a petition. And I'd ask uh, the president if he wouldn't mind to read the petition, just the petition. It's, uh, that's the letter. The petition's right in front of you. Right, right here? Yeah. Right here? Uh -huh. We, the citizens of the town of Yaki, West Virginia, petition the United States Postal, Post Office of Griffithsville, West Virginia, to reinstate a Yaki mailing address to the residents who were forced to change their longtime physical address from Yaki to Griffithsville after the Yaki Post Office closed. This forced address change has caused and continues to create a great deal of confusion for the people who have called Yaki their home for many years. Because people take pride and associate their identity from the place they call home. It is very important to the people affected by, by this forced change in physical address to have the proper and accurate physical description of their residence. Additionally, this would provide clarity to Lincoln 911 who may receive a physical address that unfortunately does not accurately depict the exact location of the said residence. We the citizens of Yaki strongly request that the United States Post Office of Griffithsville, West Virginia, 
take due notice of this petition and reinstate the Yaki address and zip code of 25573 for all of the folks who have been affected by this forced and unwanted address change. Additionally, we request all residents in the Yaki area to be assigned the Yaki address and zip code based on the political boundary of the town, not the post office preferred mailing route. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. A couple things. One is, this is the petition. It was 200 people that signed the petition. Not everybody within uh, the 200 people were all Yaki residents, but the, the thing that I want to emphasize, the 12 residents, the folks that are living in on this map, the 12 households that have been asked to change all signed the petition and want it changed back to Yaki, and they asked me to come over here and give the commission support on the issue. I talked to Alan Holder. Um, the lay I have already written a letter, prepared a letter to Miss Edith, Edith Stacy. She is the one that determines the mail routes in Lincoln County. I don't really know what the issue is. I've had several conversations with the postmaster of Griffithsville. She refers uh, the issue to uh, Edith. So basically what I'm asking is, is the support of the commission to sign a letter requesting that the areas affected by the change of address be reinstated and no other addresses within the political boundary of Yaki be changed to Griffithsville at any future time. And Alan Holder has also, uh, is, he has not signed this, but he said uh, for me to bring it over tomorrow that he would. Well, you've heard the uh, request from Josh Brumfield. I move. Is there a motion for the president to sign this letter? Question, question about it is, it, was this not due to closing of the post office and change the post zip code? Well, what, what, what it is, when there is a significant part of Yaki probably, and I'm, I'm guessing this is a very small portion of Yaki that had to change. So even the sheriff who lives in Yaki still has a Yaki address of 25573. But this, this end of Yaki is what borders Griffithsville. And for whatever reason, they have changed the addresses moving into Yaki to Griffithsville. And I think it is, you know, folks that haven't had their address changed are worried that that the post office in the future is going to make them change their address. I know I, I spoke with one resident and they said that they've already asked them to change it. So there is an existing yes. zip code for Yaki. Yes, I think uh, Miss Farley, she could probably tell you her address is Yaki 25573. Breezy Lane, is that what it is? So, yeah. So we have a motion for the uh, to give the President of the Commission authorization to sign this letter to uh, Ms. Edith Stacy. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All right, there is a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. <coughs> Here we go. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank you. it. Uh -huh.